Hi, um, I'm John Granham. I'm here again to talk about my website, johngranham.com, Irish Ancestors. And what I'm going to talk about this time is a, a very specific detail of the way the, the, the site handles surnames, particularly mid 19th century surnames. So I'm going to pick the surname Bulger, um, click search. And here we have the, the results page, the, the surname results page. And again, as you can see, the, what I'm going to talk about is the map, is the information on which um, this map is based, where it comes from, how I got it, um, how you can use it. So the first thing you can see very clearly is that Bulger is highly localized in a very particular area of Ireland. Um, um, it, the, the surname dictionary says that it comes from um, the Gaelic surname O Bulguir, um, meaning grandson of the yellow bellied. Um, I presume it's a, 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 a humorous nickname. Um, there are a lot, lots of these um, jibes at the roots of Irish surnames and uh, they can be quite funny sometimes. Anyway, um, highly localized Bulger. It's, the map is based on Griffith's valuation. Griffith's valuation is the only comprehensive Ireland-wide uh, mid-19th century census uh, substitute. It, it was a tax survey. And the, what it aimed to do was to list the economic occupiers of every piece of property on the island. Okay, the economic occupiers being the people who had the economic benefit from this property. That's quite different from a census or a, a list of heads of household. For example, if um, John Bulger had a house and 10 acres in the townland of Ballymore and was leasing another 10 acres in Ballybeg, he will appear in Ballymore and in Ballybeg in Griffiths. So it's quite important to realize that what this map does, what I've done is extracted from Griffith, all the entries where individuals are recorded as occupying a house. In other words, um, they're householders. So this is a list of Bulger households in mid 19th century Ireland in Griffiths. Um, <clears throat> there's another point about Griffiths that's worth keeping in mind as well when you're looking at this. This is a, a, a composite, the map is a composite snapshot of um, valuations that were published at different times. So for example, let's take this one up here in County Down, Kilkeel Parish. You can, you can see there's only one Bulger household. Um, it was published in 1863-64, so quite late. Whereas if you come down here to Cork, to Middleton Parish in Cork, it was published in 1851-53. So there's, there's almost uh, a 12 year difference between uh, between the two. So that, it's worth keeping that in mind. And for the main heartland, let's just see, um, this is in South Wicklow, Arklow, 1852-53. So the dates are quite important. Um, right, to get more detail, to zero in on um, what's in the, the uh, on the map, um, it's necessary to go to the, the table of householders by county underneath it. So I'm gonna pick one of the places that the, the, the Bulgers are quite uh, numerous, but not overwhelmingly numerous, County Carlow. Okay, um, this time you get another map. You get a map of Bulger households in Carlow. This is actually Carlow and the surrounding areas. So it's not just confined, but it's centered on, on Carlow. Um, and this time the map markers are clickable. So you have Kilaban, and that'll take you to Kilaban Parish. Um, you have also a list down here of Tullofalum, Aha, Ahada, the various um, uh, parishes and the number of households in each of them. Um, these are civil parishes. This is one thing to be, to be kept in mind at all times. Apart from Catholic parishes, virtually all of the records, the tax records, the property records, the census substitutes are all based around civil parishes. The civil parish, the state church until 1871 was the Church of Ireland. The Church of Ireland's parishes were the geographical units of administration for the state, um, even after 1871 until into the, the 1890s. 
So these are civil parishes, not Catholic parishes. That's worth keeping in mind again. All right, let's pick um, one of these um, and see, let's see. Okay, St. Mullen, 11 Bulger households in St. Mullen in 1852-53. You click on it and you're taken to the, the parish page. <clears throat> I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about the other things other than Griffiths, because what I'm interested in is what's behind that, that original map. So the first thing you can see in the top left-hand corner, there's a link that will take you to uh, the Bulger listings in the parish of St. Mullen on Oscobot Ireland. So let's click on it and see what happens. And there you are. Um, you have a list of all the Bulger households um, with links to the original page on which the, the, the record occurs. So let's have a look at Thomas Bulger there. And um, the this, if you look down at the bottom, well, where is Thomas Bulger? There he is there, Thomas Bulger. Um, he's occupying house, office and land, so four acres, not a very rich man. He's on holding 11 in the townland of Bahana in the parish of St. Mullins. So you can go, you can see how I've done that. I've gone from this map showing all of the Bulgers um, households in Griffiths to the, the county of Carlow, to the parish of St. Mullins, to the townland of Bahana, getting more and more local all the time. Um, one of the things about this, the, the one of the wonderful things about this site, Ask About Ireland, is that it also includes maps of the areas. So. Thomas Bulger is on holding number 11. And if we go back to the original results page, you can see map views. So if you click on this, you're taken to um, an ordnance survey map, um, valuation map, which actually has the holdings um, in, in, um, in red, red ink. You can zero into it when it gets here eventually, one of the, the points about the site is that it's public sector, it's completely free, um, it's wonderful, but it's not always um, lightning fast. So if you zoom in using the, the plus and minus buttons, you should be somewhere close to Bahama. You can see St. Mullins, that's the, the parish of St. Mullins. And again, sometimes it takes a bit of um, jimmying around. Okay. These are the townland names. So Coolihoon, um, where is Bahana? Coolihoon, Bahana, okay. Okay, where is Bahana? All right, let me show you how I would find um, this. I know we're in, we're in the general area somewhere. So I would go back to this, the, the results page. One of these other maps, this St. Mullen Parish map on townlands.ie. Townlands.ie is a very useful um, uh, tool for seeing exactly where one townland is in relation to another. Um, so let me show you what happens there. Um, okay, this is the townlands.ie page for Carlo and the civil parishes. We go down to St. Mullins, there's St. Mullins, and we go down to Bahana. Okay, Bahana, where exactly is it? It's along the river, just down below that bend in the river. So if we go back to the, there's the bend in the river there, St. Mullins. So Bahana is down here somewhere. Um, there it is, B-A-H-A-N-A, -A -A, Bahana. All right, you remember that Thomas Bulger was on holding number 11. So these holdings, when we zero in on Bahana, you can see the numbers. And there's holding 11. Okay, and that's where Thomas Bulger is recorded in 1852 in Griffith's valuation. So again, you can see you go from the, the map to the county listing, to the parish listing, to the townland listing, and you can actually look at the, the original um, um, the original record and the, uh, a map of the original record. Another way of coming at that, uh, apart from clicking on the, the link to the Bulgers in, in St. Mullins, is to go through the place names. So the, 
we'll pick Bahana again. There's Bahana. You get Bahana in St. Mullins. You can click on the list of occupants and you can see everybody, not just the Tobins um, in, in the parish. This is now the, the townland. So you click on that and you get the original page. A word or two about the record. Um, as you can see from this, this is not a census. It is a tax survey. So what you have here, let's see, Peter Timmons, well, let's stick with Bahama, uh, Thomas Cavanagh, Elizabeth Byrne, William Byrne, James Doyle, Cecilia Byrne. What's being recorded here is where these people are, okay, where these people's holdings are, um, the conditions under which they hold them, who they're leasing them from. Um, so Elizabeth Byrne is leasing land, house offices and land, and land in three parts from Cecilia Orburn. This is the area of the land. So one acre, zero perches, 17 roods, 12 acres, 37 um, roods, and, and so on. Um, so you get the area, you get the, the valuation then of the land and of the house. The valuation is how much this property should produce over the course of 12 months. So it's an annual valuation. Um, and you can see that Elizabeth Byrne, the valuation says that this, her property should produce 20 pounds and five shillings over the course of a year. And that sum there was the basis for the property tax. So if it was 5%, she might pay a pound a year, okay? And so on. So it was set as a percentage of this um, notional annual income. So the, the way, if you are interested in this, there are um, detailed guides. That this was not people making these figures up. The, the, the process of producing Griffiths was extraordinarily um, detailed, complex, rigorous, scientific. Um, and it took almost, they started in the, the late, the early 1830s and finally finished it, as you can see, in the 1850s and 1860s. So <clears throat> it was enormously painstaking. There were armies of valuers, there were lots and lots of people doing sums um, uh, until 12 hours a day, until until the candle wore out. So it, it was a very detailed, a very laborious process, and it produced an extraordinary record. I mean, one of the things about Griffiths is that this was the basis of property taxation in the Republic of Ireland until the 1990s. So it stood the test of time, almost a century and a half. There were plenty of revisions, and I'd say something about those in a, a later video, but um, it, it, the, the process of valuing itself was extraordinarily comprehensive and rigorous. Um, okay, that is the, the, the summary of what you see here, okay? This map, the, the records it's based on, and how you can go from the map deep into the records themselves. So I hope I hope this is of use to you and good hunting.